Yeah, but I like that you stay with me. You can stay okay. with me. Okay. okay. You don't have to go yet. I just want to... Uh... Okay, there we go. Oh, I feel like something happened. Yeah. Oh, there we are, right? Da, 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 da. Okay, now I'm going to try to share this. Hold on a second. Yeah, but I like that you stay with All me. All right, see what I mean? Sure. Now, how? Okay. Hold on. You don't have to go hold yet. On. Hold on. I'm I just want to. Uh... Trying to share. Hold on, sweetie. Stick. Okay. Stay there. Okay, here we go. Oh, I feel I like something happened. Oh, well, there we are, right? Okay, hold on. Let me turn this down. See, this is why I, it's like a calamity with me. I'm like a crazy. <laughs> okay, this is this. I'm going to go live and I'm going to share it. Okay, let me see what happened there. All right, there it is. Beautiful. All right, now I can get out of here. Okay, honey bunny. I think we're going to go live soon. Okay, so if Hi, people Catherine. are watching this. Hi, Catherine. Oh, great. Okay, so if people are watching this, this is our new format now. It's called StreamYard. And uh, before we pop on with Armed Radio, which we should pop on in about a minute with Jimmy, he's going to pop us on, then um, we'll be running live on Armed Radio, armeddigitalmedia.com, Armed Radio Global. And we also, what we've been doing, thanks to Leo, is we broadcast from the what's the story with Maria page. And then we're sharing it to uh, our other pages. So, um, but we're just waiting to go live with arms radio because we don't want to jump the gun. And usually at nine Oh four, we go on, but in order for 25 seconds. 25 seconds. Okay. 40. Oh, 45. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so just oh. hang in there folks. We're going to come live very soon. So everybody, yep. Get ready. Get all your stuff. Oh, I, I need a sip of water first. Yeah, get Before ready. We get ready. We're coming in soon. Jimmy will give us a I think he'll give us a go. Uh, coming, in. coming in. Here we go. Three, two, one, blast off. Here Hi, we are. my name is Maria. This is What's the Story with Maria. We want to welcome you. We are on a brand new format now. It's called StreamYard. And uh, first, I want to thank Jim Bell. He's our producer and engineer at Armed Radio, and he makes sure that we get we are streaming live on armdigitalmedia.com, armradioglobal.com every Tuesday at 9 p.m. So I want to thank Jim Bell. He's amazing, and he's been uh, doing that for three years. And where would I be without Jim Bell? I, I shudder to think. So thank you, Jimmy. We want to thank you first and foremost. I want to thank Joe Rocks. He is the big cheese at Armed Radio, which is our mothership. Okay, so if you have your TuneIn app, you can type in Armed Radio, and we pop right up every Tuesday at 9. Uh, also, come hell or high water, we're streaming live on Facebook. at uh, Usually it's around between 9.03 and 9.05. Usually we come on. Now, I want to thank and uh, let you know about he started off as our accidental intern. He graduated to accidental assistant and he has been promoted to accidental stage manager. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Leo Rodriguez. Where is he? There he is. Uh, Leo Rodriguez. That's right. Thank you, Leo. Leo is in my capacity. The show back there. He's letting people in and out of the backstage and putting all the banners up and just running everything. I would never, ever, ever be able to do this by myself. It's impossible. So thanks to Jim and thanks to Leo. 
I can do this. Now, tonight, I'm very excited to let you know that, okay, so last week, uh, Thursday was Veterans Day. I am one of those people, I, uh, very, I'm very patriotic. I love my country, and I take it very seriously. And it was Veterans Day, and I just was sad because it was just kind of swallowed up in a wash of other stuff that was happening on the news. And I thought, you know what? I really want to honor our vets, and I want to do it in the best possible way. And I thought of the three people that, like, that popped into my mind right away. Um, and they're going to be our guests tonight on the show. So we're going to call them in, in a little while. Now I do want to put out there that, uh, a special shout out to my niece, Leah. Uh, she is in the air force. She is stationed in California, in San Diego, California, and she will be going to Japan. Now I was talking to Pete earlier and he asked me what part of Japan and I don't know, but I will find out, but I'm extremely proud of her. Um, and I just, I'm beaming with, so she, uh, is in the air force and she's representing that branch of the military and, uh, Leo, you want to pop in for a second? Yeah. Actually, so I'm, my uh, friend Leo Rory, I guess is going to pop back in. And I oh, want to tell you that Leo's dad was also in the army, right? Yes, he was. And I'm going to pull that proof up in a second. Okay, so Leo's dad was in the army, and um, you have a picture? I believe so. Let me see okay. if I got this one right. Take your time. Okay, great. So we just, we're bringing all these wonderful people in. I just love all this stuff. It's so nostalgic and amazing. No, that was Lena's dad. Oh, that's Lena's dad. Okay, that's all right. Well, well, there's a lot going on back there. So anyway, Leo, your dad was in Vietnam, right? Uh, yes, he was in Vietnam. And okay. uh, I have a picture of him going on the on the ship uh, where they carried him over, if I can. Yeah, and you can always pull it up later if you want. It's not a big deal, honey. I didn't want. I mean, I didn't even tell you. I didn't mean to put pressure on you. Pressure. I just wanted to. Uh, we're we're just everybody's getting represented tonight, so we want to make sure that we share that. Also, let me look at who has joined us so far. We have Catherine Salvio's joined us. Hello, Catherine. She's in Florida. Mandar Chick Magnet has joined us. Mandar, or you're going away tomorrow, not today. Okay. Sig Miguel, yep. Sig Miguel is watching us. Is that your dad? Nope. Okay, we'll figure it out okay, later. We'll tomorrow. figure it out later. We'll get it later. Okay, so uh, a lot of our friends are joining us now. We're very happy you're here. Uh, as I said, it's going to be running on the What's the Story with Maria page, and we share it to Marina. Now, let me do this and get it out of the way. Okay, so we have merchandise and I'm not going to talk about it again, but we have Christmas is around the corner. And if you want to get some swag for your family and friends, the cup is $10. On the back, go ahead, keep eating. 10 bucks, as is our tote bag. Right now, plastic has been banned in New York. So they're just giving, oh my God, Leo, look at you. So, Always ready. What's the story with Maria? Tote bag on the back, it says, go ahead, keep eating. That's also 10 what the hell can you get for 10 bucks? I always say half a lap dance, one leg. What? One leg, and that's before the tip. That's a small leg. And then, of course, our piece de resistance, the blue apron, the go ahead, keep eating blue apron. Dodger blue, blue button blue. Yep. And this is 25. But this is my biggest seller. So if you want any of these things, please reach out to me. You can um, email us at... What's the story with Maria at Gmail? And there's an order form that um, Leo will hook you up with. And then you can order and you can use Venmo if you like or whatever you need. And then I'll ship it out to you, you right know, away. So what? If we rehearsed that a little bit more, we could be like airline stewardesses with the apron and the cup. You know the- what, Leo? We're going to have to do that. We're definitely going to have to do that. So now everybody knows what Leo Rodriguez looks like. Here's our accidental... Stage manager now. And Leo, I and, can't uh, thank you. I'm going to run up oh, to the control room then. Yes. Okay. Thank you, honey bunny. And we're going to bring in my sweet friend, Peter Feliciano, any minute. And um, I'm going to talk to him and, and uh, celebrate him. Okay. Oh, my God. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Maria. In all his handsomeness. <laughs> thank you. Peter Feliciano, you are so, – let me tell you something. I always say – Peter is the hottest of the hot. Just you, it doesn't get any any hotter than Pete Feliciano. 
All right, honey. So thank you for joining me <sighs> and from your beautiful Joe Cangelosi Designs kitchen, right? Gorgeous. Now, Peter, tell us. Okay. So you were in the Marine. You are a Marine. Yes, I am a Marine. They okay. never say uh, a retire. If you're retired, it means you've done more time. You know, you've done 20 years in the Marine Corps or 20 years in service. So, but once a Marine, always a Marine. There's no such thing as an ex Marine. Once you're a Marine, you're a Marine for life. That's what I've heard. That's mm -hmm. what I've heard from other Marines. Now, Peter, you were telling me earlier that you were really young when you joined, right? Uh, yeah. Um, this young man in the beautiful dress blue uniform came to my high school. And um, and once I saw those, I, I'm going to be very honest. Once I saw those blues, I was 17 years old. And I saw the blues. All, all I could think about was how many girls I can get when I wear that <laughs> uniform. I mean, I thought that was the best looking uniform out of all the branches. So oh my God. I was 17. I couldn't sign up yet. My parents had to sign me in. I had to wait until I turned 18, uh, which was December 3rd, which is coming up. I want to be the big 5 -0. Um, wow. so cool. yeah, it's coming up and, um, and then I, and I joined, uh, signed up and, and I joined. It was, it was the best decision of my life. Now, let me ask you something. Were you ever scared when you, when? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, um, that's, not, thank you for being honest. Yeah. I was scared every single day. I, it's easy to want to do something, but I, I never had anyone tell me what to expect. You know, I thought it was an easy thing. Hey, you go, you work out, blah, blah, blah. You know, you run, you know. No, it's nothing. It was a culture shock. It was like the I, we were up 24, 48 hours the first the first moment we got there. We didn't sleep like for 48 hours. Wow. Yeah. Now, you still work out, though, Peter. Would you, I mean, uh, you work out religiously. Uh, I honestly, I took some time off. I'm, I'm well, during religious. COVID, it's different. No, during COVID, I was, yeah, I was up at 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge, on the Manhattan Bridge, running, doing my exercise that I could outside. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, but it went to time I hibernate. So I haven't been out to the gym in like about a month. <laughs> well, I think nobody has. Now let's take a minute. Let's take a minute to acknowledge this gorgeous handsome. <laughs> so Stop. Pete, that is you. How old were you in that picture? Uh, and actually, the funny, the one on top is the one that's those are the dress blues. It looks dark there. It's, uh, it's a picture of a picture. I was 18 years old. I just turned 18. Uh, I went to boot camp in February of 89. Even though it was 89, I only turned 19 to so the end of the year. I just turned 18, um, and I just have uh, my, I think it was a cavity or something. I just came from the dentist that day. I can see, I can see it, but my mouth was a little bit swollen, but I was, I was, I just turned 18. I was, that was uh, March of two, uh, 1989. Wow. And then that's beautiful. That is, oh my God, look at you. This is uh -oh. what Pizza hottie, pizza hottie, and he works out. Now, would you, do you, did you used to work out before you joined the Marines? Or would you um, not you really. Uh, okay. I was, I was just young and, um, and you didn't have to work out when you were young. You just, you know, yeah. I'm listen. That's if, if I show you other pictures, but I, I'm, when I was, when the first picture you saw, I was 170 pounds, you know, now I'm about 230, 235. So, um, yeah, it's total night and day, but yeah, yeah. Now, now I do the weights. Honestly, back then, all, all I did was whatever the Marine Corps told me to do was exercise every single morning at 5 30. That's every single morning, 5 30, we're working out. Um, and then we go to work and then we go back home. But you still are an early riser because I see I you love, up in the I morning. I love early. I can't, to me, I feel like if I don't, that should be, that's work for me. The workout is considered for me as actual work. Once I get that done, the whole day is a skatewalk. Really? Okay. Yeah. But I love the morning. I just, there's nobody around. Even though what we're going through now, even before that, I just love the quietness. Uh, you can you can almost hear the, you know, you can hear the city sleep and relax, and it's a different vibe in the morning. Yeah. Uh, now, Peter, you, you, well, go ahead, Leo. What were we going to say? I, I, I got to clarify. Did you say your birthday was December 3rd? Mm-hmm. Wait, that's your Leo, don't say your birthday December 3rd, Leo. I'm a year older than you, and my favorite <laughs> time of the morning where I live or any place is the quiet of the morning. Oh, yes. When so I, you, well, I used to work in New, uh, New York, and I worked the overnights. And uh -huh. I, at the time that I would leave the hotel at 6.45 on a Sunday morning, it was the quietest time is, in Manhattan in the world. 
And that just is freaking me out that we like the same thing. I'm Wait, gonna you're gonna the same birthday too. That's crazy. We're gonna have to have a big celebration. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my oh god. My and two Sagittarius says, I love that yeah, sign. Isn't that wonderful? That's a great, great sign. Now, Peter, you yes. are Puerto Rican, right? Yes. Okay. It was now there I I read this somewhere once that there are are a tremendous amount of, um, in the military, a tremendous amount of Puerto Rican representatives. Is yeah, that true? Uh, there was a platoon, actually, Obama gave him, you know, and I wanted to do my research career so bad. I wanted, I was just, I got caught up in work. No, there was, a, there was a, a, Obama actually gave them uh, the, the gold medal of something, I forgot it was. There was an all Puerto Rican platoon um, from Puerto Rico in, uh, I remember the ceremony. You know, I, think, I think it was, I'm not sure which one I, I, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not sure, but I know he, when he was the president, he gave them, um, they are called the boating, the boating Um, and, uh, there was the all Puerto Rican troop and actually, I think Eisenhower, I want to say, he said, if I had a platoon, if I had an army of this platoon, we will win this war easily. Um, right. so yeah, actually my, my great uncle was actually part of the, uh, which uh, you had no idea, you, you brought that up. I had no idea he was gonna ask that question, but uh, my my great uncle was uh, part of the Puerto Rican which I found, wow. out, I found that out in, when I went to Puerto Rico for a family reunion, I didn't know that. Isn't that amazing? I think about that all the time because mm -hmm. I mean, when I talk to a lot of people in the military, they say that, that Puerto Rico was so um, intricate in helping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We still are. Many things, yes. So, um, all right, we, now you have been out, how long have you been out, well, of active duty? Uh, I've been out, I got out of the, um, I was out uh, 89 till, I got out early because I sold some vacation days. Uh, so I was out from 89 to nine, I got out like December 92. Okay. Um, almost four years, but I, I had like 90, 70, 90 days. So instead of me using them, I sold them back and I got out like about a month and a half or two months earlier. Now, but you said to me though, once a Marine, always a Marine. Right? Always, forever. I have, look at my shirt here. <laughs> I love it. It says, it says I'm gonna, it, it stands for something. It's Simplify, which is our motto. SF is Simplify, which is uh, uh, always faithful, Latin, Simple Fidelis. And MF, use your imagination. So we would say in the Marine Corps, Simplify, MF. Simplify is is like our our motto. It's always yeah, faithful. always faithful, always mm -hmm. loyal. Well, yeah, I, Marines, Marines. It's I'm sure every branch is the same, but I can speak only on my branch. We, yeah. it's 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 very hard. It's I wanted to quit. There was there's no way any Marine didn't want to quit when they were in boot camp. You wanted to quit. I wanted to quit so bad. The only reason I didn't quit because I told everyone where I live, I'm going to Marines, and if I didn't come back with that uniform, I knew I was gonna be labeled a loser. So <laughs> I had no choice but to suck it up and get that uniform. You <laughs> had to follow through. I love that though. When you tell someone you're gonna do something, you yeah, have to you gotta do it. You gotta do it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull in some other people, but st yes. you know, stick yes. around because of then- I can't wait to hear that story. All in together. This is what I love about this new format. It's so cool. All right, so stick around, Peter. Okay. Thank you for taking the time yeah, to hang out with you. us. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. All right, Leo, what do you got for us? Our, oh my God, it's Joseph Brennan. It is, oh my God. So my friend, Joe Brennan, who is out in Long Island, uh, we've been friends a long time. I'm friends with uh, uh, Joe's wife is Lynn Portis, genius. And uh, we've been friends uh, many, many, many years. And you know, Joe, one of the when I think of the military and veterans, um, you're one of the first people I think of because of your dad and the stories that you've told me about your dad that just are so amazing of the way things used to be and the kind of guys or girls that used to join and what it meant to our country. So this is a picture. Is my dad. Yeah, that's a picture of your dad, right? Yeah. So tell us about this picture. Uh, I want to say that this is probably during Korea, because by the name of the ship. Okay. Because that's not the ship he was on in the Navy. And, um, okay, your dad was in the Navy, and you told me that he joined really young, right? Yeah, so he, he's a, a native New Yorker. He was born uh, in a basement on Perry Street. 
and uh, he was, um, I think, I think just about 16 at the time of Pearl Harbor. And uh, he he joined on his 17th birthday. His parents, uh, my my grandfather signed him in uh, at 17. And he actually went into active duty when he was 17 years old um, into the Navy. Joe, from what he told you, was he was he uh, because of Pearl Harbor? Was he drawn to go in and defend the country? Is that what it was? Or was oh yeah, absolutely. All his you know, the, oh, everybody you knew, all your all your family, everybody went. He was just too young at the time, so he was gone on his seventeenth birthday. Wow! And, and uh, he ended up on an oil tanker um, as a gunner's mate, uh, and in the North Atlantic was where he started World War II. Wow. And uh, after the, the tide sort of turned in Europe, uh, then he and he spent the second half of the war in the South Pacific. That's amazing. OK, so now but you said uh, we were talking earlier and you said that you remember your dad. I mean, you were, you loved his stories that he told yeah. and and he he would go out for like six months and then he would come home. Right. You for six. Yeah, so months. after after he after World War Two. And he came home and then he uh, joined the Merchant Marine uh, as an he was he was a navigator during Korea. So uh, he would make trips every six months back and forth to Australia. Wow. Because Australia was kind of the supply depot for Korea and Vietnam. So he would do supply runs from New York to Korea, uh, to Australia to 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 uh, get supplies there uh, for staging for Korea. And he did that all through the Korean war. And then he did it through, um, most of Vietnam. So toward the tail end of the Vietnam war, I was about five or six years old. So I remember him leaving for six months and then being, and then coming back on the ship after six months. And, you know, that must've been so hard as a kid. Did do you remember? You know, do you remember would he come home and would he would it take him a while to kind of decompress and like kind of be present again, or was he the? You know, that must have been difficult, you know, because I see that all the time on on that parents have to go and do that and then come back. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he had the it was it it wasn't a lot of anxiety. There way there was you know if you were in like a, a war zone, uh, I think he dealt with a lot more of that. Um, in World War II, which funny, I didn't, I never heard him speak about until he was in his late eighties. Did he actually even speak about sort of the pressure and, and uh, that he felt while he was, um, uh, you know, in World War II. Yeah. I, you know, what's amazing about these, these guys and, and girls that are, they hold, you know, you can just imagine what they're holding you know, these stories. And I, I know your dad was an amazing storyteller because Lynn and you have told me all these stories. Like they really, when I picture like military people, I, I picture them literally carrying like their, the country on their back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, for every, they say for every person on the front lines, there's 10 people standing behind them that right. are, that are in a non-combat role. So he did a lot of convoy work um, in the North Atlantic which was pretty harrowing, you know, and he had, you know, crazy stories, you know, the way they get the gas line from one ship to the other is they take a, a string on it with a shotgun shell and they shoot it at the other ship and then they catch the string and then the string pulls a rope and the rope pulls a cable and then the wow. cable eventually pulls the gas line and that's how they get the, the gas into the other ship. Now um, you're an engineer, right? Yeah. Okay. So this kind of stuff must really fascinate you, right? Because yeah, well you you know he explains it and it and it makes a lot of sense, you know. And they I think they still do it that way today. There's there's not other any other real way to to get that line from one ship to the other. Was I'm your sure dad did it. your dad have like an engineer's mind as well as I mean I know you do. Yes, he had a very analytical mind. He that's why he ended up being a navigator. Wow. Uh, he was a navigator uh and a, and a first mate you know, through the, through Korea and through Vietnam. So he had a very mathematical mind, which got you a little crazy as a kid when you were driving to Florida and he was logging every <laughs> mile you went and how long each state went and how many miles you got in this miles per gallon you got in the state of Georgia and you know, how many miles it was to the Florida state line. It got a little crazy uh, when I drove him back and forth to Florida for 10 or 15 years. 
Wow. <laughs> but you know what? That's the that's it. And your son, Andrew, is also an engineer. Is that correct? Yeah, and so is John. John, John you know, John's too. on a tugboat. Yeah, John's on a tugboat. So he kind of followed the legacy. Wow. So your your kids really, you know, your dad really, really, because they all I've I've talked to them all separately over the years about your dad, and they all have the most amazing stories. Yeah. You know, and how uh, Jackie always tells a story of how even when he was really, you know, he, he was in his 80s and he would swim every day, right? He would go yeah, swim. Yeah. He, he would swim. He swam every day um, when he was in Florida, when we were in New Hampshire. He used to swim across the lake every day and swim across the lake and back. Isn't that amazing? It's kind of like what Pete was saying, like the stuff that you learn when you're in the service, you don't ever let go of that, really. Yeah. You know? No, I mean he's he saw a lot of a lot of wild things. You know he's, you know, trying to to fuel another ship uh, like a a cruiser that would protect the fleet. They had a, they could only go down to like I think a half a tank of gas or three quarters. So they would have to fuel these things constantly. And he had occasion on rough seas where he actually had a destroyer come up on a big wave and land on top of his oil tanker and then scrape off and go backwards back off the side of it. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yeah. But yeah. He, he loved, he loved that part of his life as difficult as it was. He, he really loved, he was very proud of it. Yeah, no, no, he really, he really did enjoyed it. I think, especially, you know, when he was out of harm's way, it was a lot more enjoyable, but you know, he saw a lot of action. I have pieces of a plane he shot down. Uh, he yeah. shot down a kamikaze. So I have pieces of that plane. Can you tell that story about the shrapnel, please? The oh, yeah. So he, he, his battle station were these anti aircraft guns, and they were uh, having, they were getting attacked. And the, I guess the gun heated up or the gun jammed, and the shell casing exploded out, outside of the breach of the gun or before the breach was closed. So he, he was covered in shrapnel all of his thighs and his stomach. Um, and, I guess he was probably in his late 70s or his 80s. He told me, oh, he's got it. I have a, I have a splinter in my leg. You know, we were in New Hampshire and he thought he got it from the dock. And he goes, I, I could feel it with my finger. And I grabbed it and I pulled it out and it was a sliver of brass. It was and still he, left it was, over it was from World War II. Yeah. He that. said, you know, when, you, when there's that much going on, he's like, they only take out the big pieces and, you know, get rid of the, uh, stop the bleeding. So he said they're not going to worry about that. Um, they're not looking for all the little teeny tiny pieces. They'll just cauterize. The, they were so hot when it went in. He said it cauterized the wound anyway. Oh so it's out there for 50 years. I actually oh. I have the pants that he got wounded in. He kept them. So wow. He a pair of, of, of uh, jeans, and you can see all these holes all across the thighs where he got uh, – where he, where he – where the blast hit him. Let me tell you that the kind of stuff that people think they're people think they're tough, and then you hear these stories, and it's like we're not tough at all. Like yeah. this is an amazing story. Okay, you. What I want you to do, Joe, is hang out. Leo's gonna pop you backstage again. We're gonna bring Leah in. I mean, I'm sorry, Leah is my niece. Lena in, and Lena's dad was also in the Navy. I so we're gonna bring her in, and then when we're, uh, I'll bring you guys all back in together. Okay? Can you hang out, Joe? All right. So that was Joe. Bre so you can hang out for a while, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you, honey. All right. So that was Joe Brennan uh, talking about his dad, also named Joe. Uh, Leo, how you doing? Leo. I'm doing fine. I can't believe she's here. She's. Are you ready for her? She's I, here. I've been ready since, I mean, I woke up. I'm like, everybody's clamoring. Lena could try. Uh, I love this one. She's amazing. <laughs> how did you she's get amazing. <laughs> Lena. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. I'm Hi, so Lena. You know Leo, right? Right. No. First of all, all I know is you screaming his name. It is so nice to meet you, Leo. Finally, right? Oh, yeah. I it was face to face. But I, Yay. you know, Lena, you've had my heart for so long just watching you go through what you were going through. Thanks. And uh, I love your anger. Oh, oh yes. Uh, you you think? Oh, yeah. I'm I've Greek. seen you perform. I'm the Greek Maria. This is what I am. Funny. Everybody, when we were in Tony and Tina's together, because that's how we met, everybody thought we were sisters. Uh -huh. I always get asked, Are you know Lena? You know Lena? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, but anyway, well, I'm, I'm very flattered. So, Lena, th thank you for being on the show, honey. I'm so glad you're here. And, you know, so as you, as you know, I've, uh, it's our 
tribute to our vets. I and that. I have always loved your stories about your dad. And I love when you post pictures of, you call him the captain still, right? <laughs> you always, when you refer to your dad, yeah. you call him the captain. The captain, right. <laughs> okay, so I think Leo's going to pull up some pictures in a minute. Okay. But, um, so you, was your dad born in Greece or was he born here? No, Ooh. he was born here, first generation here. There he is on the left. The left, the, okay. He's saluting his friend who's a Marine. And oh, they're okay. at a, like Peter Feliciano. Our exactly, friend. there they are, they're pals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what Peter was saying, that the, the Marines and the Navy, they were just, you know, they were like on that same team. Yeah, we were stationed a lot on uh, Marine Corps bases. Okay. My dad was born here. His parents were both from Greece. They came over, they had him. So he's first generation here. And uh, yeah, all he ever wanted to do, I think, was uh, he wanted to be a pilot. And then when he tried to do that, when he was in his late teens, he wore glasses. Yeah. So they said no. And he was like, well, I'm going into something. So he became a, a naval, a career naval officer. He went in as a sailor, came out for two minutes, and went back in as an officer. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Look how handsome. Oh, my God. I just love, I mean, I know this is a cliche, but I, if I see a uniform, I just think it's the most amazing thing. Me too. It's oh, the, me too. It's the most beautiful, honorable uh, thing. And so now, Lena, I, what I want you to uh, talk about, because I remember these stories from when we used to work together. You used to say that you were a Navy brat, right? Yeah. And tell everybody what that means. A Navy brat is the kids of career military officers. And uh, for me, what that meant is, well, every two years, we would get our orders. Notice I'm saying we. It yeah. was my father's job, but it was the whole nuclear family we served, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> my little sister and I served for 20 years. Mary. Mary. We would move uh, every two years. We'd sit around the table, and he'd open that envelope and read the orders and it was thrilling. It was thrilling because it's the only thing I knew. So every two years, a different state and or country and off we'd go and meet new people and cry to say goodbye to other people. And it was a, it was an adventure. And with what, my father. Uh, now, you know, it's amazing because I'm such a creature of habit that when yeah. I hear we got to go, cause we moved a lot too, believe it or not. Cause my, you know, just my parents were working harder and able to afford different things from where we lived. And so we would go to better school systems and things like that, but uh, it was so difficult. So when I hear you say we'd open that envelope and we were thrilled, I guess you get used to that way of life, right? I didn't know anything else. We were born into it. He was in the career military when I got here. So we moved. I was born in New York, and I think I lived here for three days, and then we were gone. And, and I was where never the, here again. some of the places that you lived, honey? Uh, my, where I'm trying to buy a house right now, which I think is so funny. I want a little bitty house in Beaufort, South Carolina, because my dad was stationed with the Marines on Paris Island when I was a little kid. And you know this, I won Little Miss South Carolina when I was four <laughs> yeah. years old there. So I just, I need to go back and reclaim my crown. I love it. I love living on bases and being around uniforms. It just, that's what feels like home yeah. since we didn't have a hometown. So Virginia, Virginia Beach, Quantico, Virginia, I sold the most Girl Scout cookies in the seventh grade because I decided that I was going to take a, what do you call those, those, those fold-out card tables that our parents used to have, right? Right, right, right. So I decided to take a card table and my Girl Scout cookies, and I walked just, just obnoxiously like I am. I walked into <laughs> FBI headquarters in Quantico, Virginia. It was down the street from my house on base. <laughs> I so I went in and said, can I sell my cookies here after school? And I guess nobody had done it before. And I kicked ass. I bet you did. Thank you, the Marines and the FBI. I, well, who's going to say no to it? You know, the captain's daughter. Right, exactly. I mean, I don't think that would have been a good, good thing for them to do. So mm -hmm. good for you. So, uh, so you tell me some of the places you, you were. <laughs> Naples, Italy, which was, yeah. of course, my favorite because my parents were like, you know, I was like 13, 14. I am coming of age and they pick Naples as the backdrop for my hormones. 
<laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> what a great way to put it. We, we, we sat around the table, though, and I, that was one of those ones where he said, okay, you guys, in spring, he said, we've got choices. I can go to Vietnam, and that means I'll send you guys back to his biological family's hometown, which is New York. He said, I'll send the three of you, your mom and you two, back to New York. I'll go to Vietnam. We didn't want that. It was in 69, 70. Yeah, yeah. And then he, or Guam or Naples, Italy. And we were like, oh, God, oh, God. And three months later, he came. We sat down at the table and, and he was ready. And we were like, <laughs> and he was like, we're going to Italy. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, Wiesbaden, in Germany, a, um, half a year. He was on a ship, an aircraft carrier, and uh, uh, the uh, where he was stationed was the Mediterranean. So he moved us to Athens so we could be, you know, with our family. And he could stop by and see us more often. Okay. And you speak Greek, right? You I do. So that, was, that must have been wonderful. It was fantastic. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's such a, a, an amazing part of your story and your history, you know, that you just was, were always, you know, floating around and, and that you were okay with it. But you want to know what else? I think that's the reason that why I was able to improv when you and me were in Tony and Tina's. I'd never done anything like that before. I'm a singer, not yeah. necessarily an actor. And I think that the reason you were great, I, got, I, yeah, but I, would I got, have never have known that. But, yeah. I think I got on board because every two years I had to be something. And here we go. Here we go and yeah. here we go. And sometimes we were on military basis basis, which was cool. Oh, there's me on the same. There she is. Yes. Um, we were on basis. So we were all brats and we all got it in our shorthand that this is how our life goes. But yeah. sometimes we would get stationed um, and we would live uh, where the civilian people lived who were all in school with each other their whole lives. And then Mary, my sister and I would go in there and I had to make friends really fast or I'd be alone for two years, which yeah. is another reason I think I'm just so, yeah, okay, you're, here you go. You know what? I think you're right. And and uh, that makes total sense. You had to, because you're incredibly sociable and you do make friends everywhere and you have a huge circle of friends in a lot of different places. Yeah. So that would make total sense. Um, wow. That, those are such great stories. It was a skill. Right. I know. And I love it. See, I love, this is like, like a, tonight's show to me is like a mosaic. It's like all these pieces that are just come together from different parts of the world and stories. And um, okay. So stay there for a minute. We're going to bring the, everybody back on Leo. If you could, this is Peter, by the Hello, way, Peter. Lena, this no. is Peter was a How you doing, Lena? Hi, Peter. Nice and to meet you. Know, Linda, Joe, I, uh, my, first, my first wife was a, a, a military brat. Yes. <laughs> is that true? Yes, my first wife. I didn't wife, know yeah. that. She was, uh, I would, when I was stationed in Okinawa, uh, her father was in the Air Force. Uh, yes. she, was, uh, she was living on Kadena Air Force Base. Uh, yeah. We're she was excellent. 16 and I was 18. And I always got in trouble because I'm considered an adult and she's still considered a minor. But I'm we're only two years apart. I always got in serious trouble. Well, you know, I mean, that's how things go. I'm telling you. <laughs> These are great. Okay, so if everybody can stay right there, we're gonna do the food section of our show. You know, I have to do the food section of our show. Every I in order to stay creative, even in COVID, I keep cooking. So now you gotta do this with me. We're on three, we're gonna go one, two, we're gonna go. Go ahead. This next section of our show is called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. So one, two, three. The section of our show is called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. Thank you, gang. So tonight, what did I make? I made a delicious shrimp in garlic butter with pesto. I have, wow. yeah, delicious wow. red peppers and scallions and a little bit of Marsala wine that is there. So I, I would, if you were here, I would, we would, you know, before COVID, everybody used to come to the apartment. Lena knows she was here. And for my salad tonight, for a nice fall salad, I made red leaf lettuce with uh, cucumbers, pears, Bosque pears, and gorgonzola cheese. I'm trying to bring the world in here. Very nice. Thank you, Joe. And uh, I'm going to put a little sesame infused oil and pear infused vinegar. 
that's going to be a delicious. I wish I could share. I feel terrible. Now for um, tonight I have, and you know what? I got to say, this was kind of inspired by the captain's uniform. Okay. The stripes. <laughs> and the white, you know, that blue <laughs> white. These are uh, uh, vanilla, I'm sorry, white fudge dipped Oreos. So there you go. The captain inspired those. All right. And that that is our food section of, of the show. Now, uh, Leo, can you, can you pop in as well, or is that too many people? Let me see. Uh, Leo's dad was in the Army. Did you find that picture of your dad? I did find that picture of my dad. Hold on okay, a second. So you, we will. Leo, why don't you tell us about a little bit about your dad and his experience? Can you see that? Um, there you okay. go. Come out. Oh, there he is. He is right here. Can you see the mouse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my dad on the way to Vietnam. Wow. Uh, yep, yeah, back in, uh, I think this was 67. Uh, as a matter of fact, my dad uh, got married. I believe he got married, had the reception, and then off he went. Yeah. That, um, then, um, they did that a lot. A lot of people got married because they will also get more money. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that part. My yeah, parents you would did. get more money. Just if, wait till I tell my mom that. Well, no. I mean, they would, just, they would just speed up the process because once he's going to Vietnam, the odds are against him. He wants to get married. You know, have life insurance. Someone's, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of things in that. A lot of details. Cheating, you know. Joe, was your was uh your dad was married pretty young, right? Yeah, but after after World War II. Okay. I wanna say he was married in I wanna say fifty five. Yeah, what nineteen fifty five. I'm I'm guessing so it was during the Korea. Wow. A, a lot of these it's just and then off you go. Yeah. Um you do you folks remember I mean if you can describe a little bit for the average, like I am not from a military family. I have a deep love. Actually, my dad was in the Italian military, the Carabinieri, but it was before I was born. And then he came to, but he's the one who really uh, like lit that fire in my niece to join the Air Force. She always wanted to. I was telling Pete earlier that she wore camouflage as a kid, always. It was like the craziest thing. Like if you wanted to make her happy, you bought her something that had camouflage. And it was this crazy obsession she had, but it was my dad that was like, listen, why don't you just join, you know, and she picked the air force. But, um, you know, was it, was, was there something that you were, Pete, you said you were drawn to it and, uh, Lena and, and Joe, you both said that your dads were young when they joined. Yeah. Now, did your, did your mothers come from military backgrounds as well? Uh, well, I, all my aunts, I, all my uncles were in. You know, my mother's one of seven. All, all my uncles were in. So, you know, back in back in the forties, everybody was in. Right. So, you know, so yeah. all her brothers were in different uh, branches of the service. And so, so they knew that life, and they knew what to expect. And yeah, Lena, exactly. How about, how about your mom, Lena? Not at all. She grew up in Jamaica, Queens. She knew my father. They were both uh, first generation Greek kids. And uh, she was a little homebody and loved being a military wife. Never really? wanted to come home. Friggin' loved it. No, she would really? give fabulous dinner parties and all these naval galas. And she was, she found her herself in that whole life. She loved it. That's so great. Yeah. Wow. I think that's, that's why we liked it so much too. She it was just an adventure for us. You know, my father, when my father died and I did his eulogy, it was a big deal about him being in the Navy because that was his whole thing. If you ask my father to describe himself, he would say to me when he wanted to kick my butt when I was in high school, <laughs> there are three things that matter to me, God, family, and country, and not in that order. And I was like, oh, dad, I <laughs> Stop being a military dude. I don't I don't care. I just want to smoke some pot. Leave me alone. <laughs> What's that line from the Breakfast Club? My dad and your dad should get together and go bowling. <laughs> my, my father was just a Navy, a military man his whole life. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, the other thing that's funny now, what's going on is all these po the politics and people saying, Well, your father was in the Navy, so he must have been this or he must have been that. We had rules. 
that were unspoken that I thought everybody had when we were kids. We didn't talk about politics mm -hmm. because whoever was in the White House was my father's immediate boss. Oh, and we didn't do that. It's so fun. And a lot of my young life was him stationed at Walter Reed Hospital, my father. Oh. During the Vietnam War, he wow. was at Bethesda, Walter Reed, and all that. So we never got to talk like that. Yeah. I, so here I mouth off on Facebook all the time politically, and I can hear my father going, what are you doing? Knock that off. I think this is a different situation, though. I, I really gonna, do. I have something yeah. very important to say. Yeah. Hi, Joe. Hi, you, Lena. Isn't Joe the best? <laughs> Joe's the best. Go ahead. How many of you, I, I grew up singing the national anthem at almost every Veterans Day ceremony because my dad ended up working for a city, and his – his dad was in the military. My mom's dad was in the military. And when my when my grandpa died, my dad was so emotional that he made me read the last the uh, the part for the eulogy that they give for the military. I don't know how. I don't know. Oh, I was. I didn't even sing for that funeral because when I sang for my grandmother's, I was a mess. But my dad said, "Here, you read this," and I ended up reading it for my grandfather's funeral. And like the second one, I was like, "Oh my god." Oh, there goes any projection whatsoever. And even I my birth grandfather was in the World War II. I think the gift of being patriotic, you can't get from any place else. You know no. what I mean? It, it's so funny when, I, oh, you, are, you're, are you American? Yeah, I'm American. I'm, I, I'm, am I political? No, I, I'm patriotic as hell, right, that's though. You know what's yeah. funny? Because I, I really wanted to focus on that. And I said it to Leo earlier. I said, because it was the same way when I was growing up. You didn't know who the Republicans were. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Our families were so happy to be here and yeah. so proud to be Americans. Like my mother used to run around and say, um, on Thanksgiving was her favorite holiday. And she'd say, she dressed like a pilgrim. She made the dress herself. <laughs> say, ah, today I am a pilgrim. <laughs> Of your mother's ass. Well, my, my father would say, there are no Italian pilgrims. She said, today I am a pilgrim. <laughs> so serious about being an American citizen. And so, but we didn't know. It's so different now. We didn't know who was Republican, who was Democrat. We just knew that you loved your country and you saluted the flag and you were proud. You were so proud of that. And, I, you know, like what I got, what I like, Thinking about the three of you and, and Leo, and, and I, I got that patriotism in your blood, you know, and I have that even though I really don't come from American military, but I mean, really, they kissed the ground they walked on. And I, I really, really want to get back to that. Yeah. And I think we have a chance. Mm -hmm. I think we have a chance, you know, and, um, you know, Joe, you know, Joe, I love the stories that you've told about your dad and like how how he much he loved this country. And he was yeah, he was very passionate about it. I mean, he luckily <laughs> I'm not luckily, but he passed away. He didn't have to see the worst of this, yeah. but he wasn't he wasn't a political person like that at all. And I think really what it is is before you had bigger things to fear. You know, you had to, the whole the whole country was worried about communism. You know, you were worried about big shit. You worried about getting your ass kicked. And mm -hmm. now it's almost like. We think we're such badasses. We don't have to worry about anybody else so we can feel free to be assholes to each other because we don't really have a, a common enemy that we truly fear. You know, you got it back a little bit at 9-11 and mm -hmm. then it, mm -hmm. it waned away and we, we turned into this mess that we're in right now. Right. I don't um, think everybody remembers that the most important part, I think that everybody, even if they were drafted, they had a sense of protection. They were going to protect us. They were protectors. Right. And and the idea that when they throw the politics in there, it's more like taking as opposed to going out and protecting the ideals that it's the only reason why we're here now in 2020, whatever the year has been. Yeah. All, I mean, all these, all these, you're going to say a lot of these people in the military, the majority of them are are kids they're like i they're 17 like he's like joe said his dad was 17 <laughs> i had to have my parents sign in 17 18 we're still kids we're we're going into this not knowing what's on the other end but we but but we swore in and said listen I'm, I'm gonna do this sign my contract for four years and but you go in a lot of people you have a military family you know that their fathers and fathers i my father didn't go in but 
I went in because I wanted to do something. I wanted yeah. to be part of something, especially for the country that I love. You know? Right. Well, my father and, always said you could, you can only get an 18 year old to charge a machine gun and tell him that he's going to kill the guy <laughs> who's firing a machine gun at him. You know, that's right. on, the only thing that Marine, you know, Marine boot camp makes you feel <laughs> invincible and makes yeah. you crazy enough to do shit. Like yeah. That. That. And Joe, and only Joe's an 18 year old to do it. No, no yeah, but Joe, forty year old's gonna do it. Yo, your, your story about your dad with the gun. This I, I know the feeling of of because his his probably his probably barrel got so hot that 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 the chambers couldn't go through anymore. Yeah, so they, they popped out and, and some of them, like you said, they burst. Yeah, but, I know yeah, the feeling. I, I, had, I had, I had, a, open, I had yeah. a shell go down my uniform one time. It, it wasn't it wasn't a good feeling. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, burning hot. Oh, yeah, hot. Oh, Peter, hot. where'd you? Peter, where'd you go to boot camp? I missed uh, it. I, well, I heard what you said, Paris Island. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it over, there. Over the sand, please. Right? Wow. Uh, listen, Peter, I was little Miss Buford, but I, I heard. was way before uh, your I time. Was, I was cheesy when you would say all these things. I went to nursery school on base. <laughs> no way. I'm dying to go back. <laughs> I just did love it there. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> Lena, let me ask you, what was school like? Did you have like, was there a military, uh, it was just all your military friends, kids? Were it, together? Depends. it depends when I lived on base, like in Quantico, Virginia, or um, we didn't, I went to base school uh, in Paris Island. There was also a place on Long Island in Nassau County. Uh, it's where Charles Lindbergh took off from, Mitchell Field. Well, Joe, you know, know it's, it's Roosevelt Field, you, right? It's where, it's where the shopping mall is now. Exactly, and I lived. There's in still barracks the next to it, but it's all it's all I, shopping mall. I lived in one of those barracks for years. Oh, wow! And my father worked at Brooklyn Navy Yard. So, but when yeah. we went to civilian schools, when I lived in Italy, we absolutely went to a military and ambassador kid school because we had to be taught in English. So we went to a right, yeah. right. Now, Lena, did you have any entertainment? I worked for a, a company called Missoula Children's Theater Company, mm -hmm. and we would travel around from base to base a lot of time, from base to base, overseas as well as I as, love as it. the Southwest. And we would be there for a week teaching the military kids a theater show in in a week, and we would do the show, perform in the weekend, and then we go pack up and go to the next base. I spent a lot of time in New Mexico and. That's, and, uh, Arizona. I'm probably too old. That hadn't started by then because if a troop had come in and I saw it, I would have packed my bags and gone with them. <laughs> yeah, I would have left. So they knew better than to do that. Oh, you're, you're to the captain probably arranged it. <laughs> so they didn't come in. <laughs> Maria, did you say that you're that you are also on AFN? Who? The radio, uh, Maria. You you oh, say it, on... it's called Armed Armed, uh -huh. like oh, yeah. Armed Armed Radio. And uh, is you it, are, is it, isn't that a military? Um, well, they, they, a lot of the listeners, like this show goes to 66 countries. Um, and because uh, I had a friend of mine was in the army and he was in charge of, I want to say it was AF, um, AF, AFN, I want to say it was arm or AA arm air force armed forces network. radio or armed forces network. Yeah, and yeah, he was, and I was in Okinawa, and he was like the, like the, like the DJ. And we okay. only had one, only had one station on the island that we. Could, wow! Oh, like Robin, like Robin, like Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and and we had one English channel, and it was on like they had tapes, and believe it or not, the Marines at lunchtime, it was um General Hospital, and we were all. <laughs> We were all glued to the TV till to one o'clock, and then we all went to our job. General <laughs> Hospital every single day. That's great. <laughs> and you did it happy. together. You watched it together. Yes, we all we all in the rec room watching General Hospital. <laughs> oh my God! Well, so my, I, my, my I, father used to listen to Tokyo Rose. <laughs> oh, right. That was a propaganda, that that right? propaganda right. station yeah. that they used to broadcast at the ships and the occupied yeah. islands. Yeah. Tokyo wow. Rose. Yeah, that was the, uh, Korea, right? No, that was that World was World War, uh, World War II. Yes, fascinating. This is fascinating. So I, I do want to tell everybody that this show is going, it goes into podcasts in about 12 hours, and you can find it on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker. So if you go to any of those and type in what's the story with Maria, the name of the show is Honoring Our Vets. 
So you'll see it, it'll pop up and then you can listen to it as well. So uh, what, what Pete was asking, yeah, this is Armed Radio. You can stream it, armeddigitalmedia.com, armedradioglobal.com. If you have your TuneIn app, just type in Armed Radio, it'll pop up. But it's really cool in podcasts too. And now we're doing this new format with the stream yard, which I love. And Leo, I, I mean, we got to give it up for Leo Rodriguez. Oh, Leo, good stop, job. Stop, I, you know, stop, really, the audio is great. The audio yeah. is really good. It's really I good. I really man. like the format. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy, how much time do we have? Jimmy's our uh, engineer. He's in New Hampshire. So he's running the show from there for the radio show. Oh, where is he in New Hampshire? Give him a shout out. Oh, okay. Good. Four or five minutes. So what would you say is as a military person, whether family or directly in, would you say is, is the, the, the thing that is embedded in you and no matter where you live, where you go, it's just like, not nah, uh, that's, that is in my blood. What would you say, Joe, for you, what is it? Um, I guess it would have to be like honor and truth. And my, you know, my kids will tell me the same thing. They'll be like, you can do anything. You can go to dad. You can tell him anything happened and he's going to deal with it. They like, but if you lie to him, you're fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I got that from my father. Like you better be a straight shooter. Like my kids, yeah, you could total a car, whatever. I catch you lying. It's, it's 10 times worse than anything you did. So I think it's a, a lot of honesty. Integrity is really what I feel like got from him. Yeah. Leo, how about you? Uh, you know, I, I think a lot about the people that come back from war and what they've seen and how they deal with it. And knowing that my grandfather's and my dad, you know, uh, up until recently when he had to, to, to talk about it, that there's some horrific things that our servicemen go out there for. And so I always thought about, thank you. Thank you. I know you didn't have to, uh, uh, uh and, um, respect, you know? Yeah. And a lot of crushes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lena, how about, what, what do you think? It's my father and the military for me. It's a shitload of integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, integrity. Integrity. Uh, standing up, yeah. doing the right thing, respect and honor. Yeah. Honor. Uh, and remembering it afterwards when they come home. I got goosebumps. It all matters so much, Peter. Yeah. What do you What do you think, honey? I, it, it's it it changes your life. Um, if you, it's a purpose, sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. You want to do something, but also at a young age, you, you get to learn. You understand? For a marine, they break you down. Like I had no idea what's going on. I didn't know what was up, what was down. If if I did it right, it was wrong. If I did it wrong, it was wrong. It was like, what's going on? And then they make you, and then in three and a half months, you're like, who is this person? And then and then you keep learning and learning, but it's also, it, it, it's, a, it's a time as a kid where you could adventure a little bit, take four years out and say, hey, let, let me try something different. And, and, and also to grow, to me, it is far beyond the best thing I ever did in my life was, was going to the military. The best thing changes you, it changes you. All right, we're going to end on that. I want to thank Leo, Leo Rodriguez, our stage manager. <laughs> Good job, Leo. Lena, com. Joe Brennan, thank you, Joe, for being here. And my friend Peter, Fli all of you are my friends, and I thank love you. Thank you, Joe. So, nice meeting you, Joe. Thank, and you out there. thank you so much. God bless you. And let's hear it for our troops. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Thanks, thank everybody. you, Maria. Thank you. Bye bye, Maria. Bye, you guys. Bye. User left your channel. Disconnected.